Okay, so at this point we managed to build uh, two very promising models. One is a classification tree, the other one is a tree nut model. So now let's see how these models can be deployed. Now there are many different ways to think about the deployment and then the very simplistic way to deploy things is you always need to be able to save your models for future use and number two being able to score new data using the models that you saved. Of course once you want to do more elaborate deployment I may also comment on that uh, at the end of this video. But for now let's just see how easy it is to save these models and use them to score your data by staying within SVM. So what I have here is a Cartert uh, model opened once again and I'm interested in getting the model that has a 20 nodes solution. Well first of all I can save this model for future use so all I need to do is click on the save grove, uh, point myself to the uh, location where I want to save it and just call it uh, say credit underscore cart dot grv so at this point the model is saved so I can close it and I can do similar thing with 3NET all I need to do is click on the save grove button uh, and again uh, give it a name say 3NET click save and again I can close this model and at this point I can go ahead and reopen my model so I click on the open grove file, uh, grove file button I find my credit, uh, say, cart.grv, and as you can see, that model is now opened, and I was interested in the model that has uh, 20 nodes, which is this one here. And now if I want to score the data set, the sequence is very simple. You just click on the score button here, and um, it already suggests to score the data set that we have currently opened. Uh, of course, if you have your data in a different data set, you just click open data file and point yourself to that other data set. And all that matters is that that data set should have the original modeling variables in whatever order that's there. Uh, the grow file that we just used and the specific model, it currently selected terminal nodes 20 because that was the model that was selected in my display. Alternatively, I could pick the optimal model, which had the only two nodes in this case, or I could do my own uh, selection based on nodes from this table. So either of those approaches will work fine. So I gave the input data set. I gave the model in terms of Grove and specifically which model in the Grove. Now I need to save score results, so I click on that, put a check mark there, and give it a name. So I'm going to say, call it credit, uh, cart, credit score, uh, say based on the cart model. So click save. And in addition, you can also save all model related values and you can also save all of the original variables because that helps in some of the future post processing. So in this case, and notice I'm also saving it as a CSV file or I could also use any other available data format. So when I click score, it quickly goes ahead and does all of that scoring of uh, 100,000 plus records that I have. Uh, of course, it would run much quicker if I only had a few uh, records to score, but it gives you just some general idea. So it comes back with the overall uh, things like what's the overall gains, ROC curves, things like that. More interestingly, uh, it created a data set on my training data folder. So if you just do this here and uh, look at our credit score cart dot csv so if i open uh, uh, open this data set with uh, microsoft excel uh, hopefully we'll get uh, all of those uh, data points presented for us okay so this is the file open in excel notice the parts of this file well namely uh, like revolving utilization age and debt ratio. Those are the same things that we saw in the original Excel spreadsheet. However, now in addition to those, you also get uh, the, the target delinquent. It's the same as before. And for each target, you have predicted response, like whether you have a delinquency or not on every given account. In addition to predicted response, you're also getting these predicted probabilities one and two of 
uh, one is stands for non-delinquent, two stands for delinquent, and you can also see it uh, for yourself that the probability of delinquency goes into uh, about 0 0.18, 0 0.03, and depending on these probabilities, there's the corresponded predicted response as either delinquent or non-delinquent. And uh, there's also a few other things, like one useful parameter here is a node that shows you what is the final node assignment that that record uh, falls into. And again, if I switch back to our uh, SPM software, every record is assigned to its own node, and that's exactly what uh, that uh, variable represents. Now, in a similar way, I can... Uh, uh, so at this point, I basically saved cart model, reopened cart model, and scored uh, a new data set, which happened to be the, the, the same data set in my case, uh, in order to produce predicted node assignments and uh, class assignments and probabilities. So the next model was TreeNet. So again, I go ahead and click on Open Grove. I find the model that I saved, which was, uh, uh, in this case, it was credit underscore uh, TN, and uh, this is my model, this is my Grove. Uh, I'm interested in scoring this optimal ROC model, so I'm going to again click on the score button, uh, use the same data set, this is my Grove file, and right now it suggests me the model that has uh, 63's, which is fine. Alternatively, I could have picked any other modeling configuration, not just the, the one that it points me. And the save score results, so I'm going to save scores as, and it's going to be credit score underscore TN. And again, I am going to include all of these uh, modeling uh, variables and original information. So now I click score. And at this point, it actually scores each record uh, by applying those uh, 60 3-nut trees and, uh, and producing all of the predicted probabilities and uh, predicted responses. So it should be over soon. Again, the end result is you're getting the ROC curve. And we know that the 3-nut has a better uh, uh, accuracy than the CART model based on ROCs. And when you go and look at that credit score underscore three net, again, if you open this file in Excel, uh, now you get a very similar data layout uh, when you have the original target, all of the original predictors in this Excel spreadsheet. But in addition to that, you're also getting uh, internal predicted 3-net response. This variable happens to be, for those who know, half log odds of uh, delinquency. But more importantly, you're getting these variables prob1 and prob2, and these predict delinquency. The prob2 predicts the actual probability of uh, account going delinquent. If you compare these against CART, then what you will see, you'll have a lot larger variation in these numbers, and every account pretty much gets uh, a unique score. And that's one of the advantages of 3Net, and that's one of the reasons why 3Net gives you more accurate uh, models. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the issue of deploy deployment is a very straightforward. You just open your model, uh, open the data set, specify output data set, uh, decide which model you want to apply, and the rest pretty much goes for you. Now, as far as the deployment goes, sometimes you will be interested in deploying models outside of SPM, because what I've just shown uh, kind of assumes that you have access to SBM on the scoring side. If you don't have that, then there isn't yet another way to do deployment, which I will quickly highlight here, and then uh, we'll probably come up with some other videos at some point in the future. An alternative way to score a model would be to export the model itself into some kind of language. So I have a card model here. And notice, next to the score button, there's a translate button. So when I click on the translate button, it offers me a choice of a different uh, languages 
that we support that allows us to save model description uh, in any of those formats. And in this case, suppose I want to say a SAS code, uh, save output to file to score uh, my current model. So again, I can put a check mark here and uh, I can give it a name, credit underscore cart. And uh, this way, it should create a, a SAS code that will have all of that. So again, I click OK. Uh, 558 lines were written into that file. And now if I go there, I should be able to see my uh, uh, credit, dot, uh, credit card dot SAS. So if I open this and uh, uh, basically, let's say, just edit it in, in this system here, then what you will see inside as a, essentially a SAS code that is needed in order to deploy the actual CAR3. And the CAR3 is essentially a sequence of if-then-else statements uh, followed by some uh, uh, class and the probability assignments associated with uh, terminal nodes. And just like I can say, I can translate a CART model in a very similar way, I can translate a tree net model. So if I pick this model here and click on the translate button and again specify a specific output format, the language that I'm interested in. So I have Grove, the model of interest and save output to a file so I can uh, do it uh, like uh, credit underscore tree net so that's the uh, output script so I click OK and now it exported 3433 lines of code because tree net is a lot more elaborate model and if I find that in my output so I simply open it in uh, Notepad again, and now you see the exact uh, lines of code that are needed in order to implement tree net model. Now, namely, tree one of sixty, then you'll have tree two of sixty, and so on, and all of these scores and updates the tree net runs, including uh, the predicted responses, and so on. So, as you can see. Uh, the deployment part is uh, very straightforward. We were, we're, we're trying to implement all of our tools in such a way that once you have a model, you can easily save it, score it, and translate it. So you can either do deployment using SPM itself, which is the simplest and the most easiest way to proceed, or in the more elaborate systems, you can always do the uh, external scoring by first translating model into whatever the language of choice. So to summarize what we've managed to do in all these videos, we've started with an Excel spreadsheet of uh, the data set of interest. We explored the data set using simple frequency distributions and descriptive statistics. Then we quickly went ahead and built a simple cart tree with all sorts of insights and provided us a segmentation structure of the data. Then we moved ahead and built a stochastic gradient boosting tree nut model that allows us to improve further on predictions and also see some uh, graphical representation of the nature of dependencies in the data set, including nonlinearities, including all sorts of effects that are normally cannot be easily captured by standard linear approaches. And then we also managed to save our models, score our models, and uh, get the output spreadsheets that included the original information plus all of the predicted responses and, uh, and all of the predictions coming from both CART and TreeNet model. And we also managed to translate all of these models into a working SAS code that could be now taken by whatever programmers or implementers that you may have on your end and pushed down into the production line. Everything is done in under basically an hour uh, from start to the end and this is the beauty of modern machine learning techniques and the overall the all of the benefits of modern style modeling approaches. So hopefully you'll try some of this, you'll see how easy it is to use, and you also get enormous advantage and competitive advantage in all of your future work.